Russ Chandler Stadium here in Atlanta, Georgia, the Midtown area, home of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and host of the 2023 Southwestern Athletic Conference Tournament this year. The, the Grambling State University Tigers, Southern University Jaguars will wrap up day two of the tournament. The number one seed of Grambling State University taking on the number three seed in Southern University. Old foes from the Western Division and, of course, rivals from every single sport that you can think of, including the bands. Well, I'll tell you what, Southern University getting ready here. They had a great game yesterday against Bethune-Cookman. The Grambling State University Tigers trying to get another win to get into the winner's bracket. The winner of this game will take will uh, advance and will wait the winner or the winner of the loser of this game and Bethune-Cookman. Coming up to the plate now for the Southern University Jaguars will be Jalen Armstrong. As we're just about ready for play here. Between these two teams, the coach, Roger Cador, joining me for today's ball game. And, Coach, you got two old foes here. Hey, man, you almost took me out the last game. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a shot, and it is right to the shortstop. Or to the second baseman for Grambling. And that's going to be Kyle Walker, and there's one down. Yeah, this uh, that last game, if you weren't on medicine, you got on it after that last game. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, man. I got to talk to Coach Vasquez, and he was uh, so happy. I said, you know, I said, I'd never stop believing in the in the boot that you all had a chance. Shot down the first baseline foul. Hendricks up to bat now for Southern University. Hendricks batting 300. He's played and started in 38 games. And that misses for a ball. What a quick turnaround from that last game, Coach. And, boy, I tell you what, so many people were – it was just a great game, and it was unfortunate uh, one of those teams had to lose FAMU. They're going to have to bounce back quick because they got the Grits next session tomorrow. And here is a shot and caught by the shortstop. The ball was actually going away from him. He was going one way. The ball was actually in another way. That was a great catch by Guichard. Ooh, almost came out. And it is on one to count with two outs. Well, Coach, I got a text uh, during the break here, and uh, they wanted to know a little bit about where you were from. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, because we've got people from all over the country who are listening, uh, watching this ball yeah. game, I should say. And uh, They asked where we were both from. I'm from Beloit, Wisconsin, which is a city about 70 miles north of Chicago. I'm from a little small town named Ventress, Louisiana, which is New Roads, 35 miles from the city of Bad Roads. So, no, for people who ask me, am I from Louisiana? No, I am not. Yeah, not originally. I am. I've been in Louisiana, though, for, I don't know, 30 years. So, some people say I lost my Wisconsin card a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, <laughs> I do. And the thing is, with my accent, it's of Haitian descent. Uh, you know, my first language was Creole. I started speaking English well, around 10, 11 years old. But I was speaking Creole up until then. So... That's why maybe the accent is what it is. Well, people are just like, you know, that's a, that's a great accent. <laughs> oh, they say it is? Yeah. Good. Most people say it's great, so uh, that's a compliment. Two and two the count now with two outs here in the top of the first inning. Swung on, foul. What is so interesting, there was a, a man that grew up with my father. And he was a brilliant man, so he went and he became, got a Ph.D. from the University of Seattle. Mm -hmm. And he threw away his accent. Swung on foul once again. He made sure he didn't. Which say threw away his accent. Yeah. So he saw me way later. He was, I was graduating, and he saw me and was talking. He said, oh, boy. He said, I made the worst mistake. I said, what you did, doctor? I'm not going to call his name. He said, I went and threw away my accent, and you kept yours. I said, I don't know how to lose it. 
It's just one of those things that, yeah. uh, you know, you, you are from where you're from, man. Yeah, and, you, and I, wasn't going to, I wasn't going to give away my accent. I tell you what, this, uh, it has been a an eventful day two here at the tournament. You know, we've had some good games. Wow. <laughs> we really have had some good games, you know. It's just unfortunate teams have to lose because there's been some great ball. Jackson yeah. lost both games by two runs. Both yeah. games. Yeah. That's just heartbreaking. Yeah. Swung on, and this is going to be thrown out at first base to retire Southern University. No runs, no hits. Time to go to the bottom of the first inning. Gramley coming up to bat. No score between the Tigers and Jaguars. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Join the HBCU family. You become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own. All right, back here at the <laughs> back here at the Georgia Tech University, it is McNeese Baseball Park, and people being cutting up. Hey, that guy was one of the best pitcher on the, my college team. He played with me in college, Mr. Miles Portier. Well, he cutting up with the young folks in the stands, man. Oh, Look yeah. at that. <laughs> I mean, that guy only lost two games in his college career. Really? Oh, no, he was a great pitcher. Unbelievable. No. Wow. Well, he's definitely having fun in the stands. Yeah. And I tell you what, it's, that's what it's all about, man. Fans having fun yeah, here in Atlanta. Yeah. And taking a look at the Grambling starting lineup, Tiger Borum, Kyle Walker, Trevor Hatton, Keelan Mack, who was a hero yesterday, Cameron Buford, Kinu Jacobs, Gishar, Jose Vargas, Chris Marcellus, Terry Burrell the third, and Connor Rudy on the mound for the Grambling Tigers. First pitch is a ball. Taking a look at what Tiger Bourne did yesterday. Able to get a double, and he starts off with a single today. He had a double, a walk, couple of walks in the game. He had a home run as well. And Kyle Walker coming to the plate. He had a double and a single in yesterday's game. No score between the Tigers and the Jaguars, and. You know, we look at the Tigers and the Jaguars this year. The Bayou Classic celebrates 50 years. Long time. Man. Some I remember I went to the first one in 73 or 74. It was the very first one, and I was there. Tulane Stadium. Yes, indeed. Wasn't around just yet, but I did get a chance to watch a lot of it on television. That's what intrigued me about Grambling and Southern. Yes. A pitch. And therefore, strike 0 and 2. Antoine Harris, starting pitcher for Southern University. Harris with a 7 5 3 ERA. He is 1 and 6 on the season, 11 appearances, and 10 games started. He 
Here's a shot, and this is a single in the left field. I think in Harris' case, if Chris can get a couple of innings out of him, he'll be more than pleased. I don't think he, he feels Harris can, can give him a lot, you know, because he haven't given him a lot. So he's hopefully a couple of innings here, maybe three innings, and he'll like to go and try to piecemeal this game together. And sometimes you got to do that in the tournament is just kind of piece it together little by yeah. little. Well, in this case, I know that's what he's trying to do. And try it on the bunt. Five runs by Alabama State in that last game against Florida A&M in the ninth <laughs> inning. Man. Yeah. And they're capable of doing it. That's they the scary part. They did what they were capable of doing. That's the scary part. See, that kid sat on that bench. And here's a bunt down the third baseline foul. And he said he just waited patiently. And when he got his chance, he came through. For Southern, they are coming in winning six out of their last, five out of the last six games, I should say. Swept Pond Bluff and took two out of three against Alcorn. Played a seven inning game back on May 14th, nine to eight the final there. Pond Bluff, they were able to run rule the Golden Lions in two consecutive games, 12 to two and 12 to one. So they can swing the bats when they want to. Yeah, you know. Trevor Haddon at the dish. Ball nearly got away from the catcher, Sanchez. Did a great job of staying in front of it. That's one of those positions where you have to be so mobile all the time. Yes, yes. Yeah, and they'll be able to, they've got some guys who are just capable of keeping that ball, killing it when it's in the dirt and letting it stay right there. Here's a pitch, swung on, missed. That Got was a it. bad pitch. A good throw. Got it. So a strikeout for Trevor Hatton. Got the Southern Jaguar fans cheering them on today. Yeah. What a nice crowd here. And you know, you got a lot of Southern and Grambling fans and from the Atlanta area. Right. Great crowd. For a Thursday night, this is a great crowd. Yes, it is. Pitch by Harris, ball one. Swung on and missed. Again, the winner goes on to the winner's bracket and will await the winner of the loser this game against Bethune-Cookman. Those two teams will play at 12 noon tomorrow. And FAMU and Prairie View tomorrow at 9 a.m. Fouled off. Ooh, right into the Southern dugout. Take a look at this shot right into the dugout. One and two the count. Two on the board for Gramley. We're gonna call that a strike. And Coach Pierre is not happy about that. <laughs> Second strikeout. Let's see right here. Ooh, there it yeah. is, yep. Yeah. Couldn't hold it back. Outside, and again, great job by Sanchez keeping the ball in front of him. 
Southern beat Bethune Cookman on Wednesday. Four to two, the final. The last series that Grambling and Southern played, Grambling won two out of three. Southern won a marathon in 11 innings, six to five, and then lost three to two and 13 to six. In the early series, Southern lost two out of three to Grambling. Two games went in extra innings. They lost seven to eight to seven, one eight to seven, both in 12 innings, and then were run ruled in the last game by the count of 16 to six. So they've lost four out of six to the Grambling Tigers. It's in that amazing. Okay. Shot going into center field. This one looks like it'll be caught. And it oh. drops. It drops. Two runs will score for the Grambling Tigers. Dropped in between the center fielder and the right fielder. Twilight. And two runs get on the board. The right fielder should be running over there. See, he didn't never let him know. He died. He never let him know he didn't have it. He never saw it, guys. Never yeah. saw the ball. Second baseman was pointing him, trying to point him over, but he never saw it. Right fielder got to come over faster. It was high enough. And they're going to credit him with a double. Two runs in for the Grambling Tigers, and it's two to nothing. Two runs and three hits. Why light, boy? I tell you, this is it's a tough time right now. I bet you right now, the center fielder, Armstrong, feel like he's in the twilight zone. <laughs> yeah. Outside. Guichard up to bat for the Grambling Tigers. And you feel bad for the young man because, you know, you, you want to make that play for his team. Swung on and missed. Guichard from Phillipsburg and San Martin. Transfer from the University of South Florida. Guichard hitting in the sixth position tonight. No, did not swing. Teams that can jump out early. Yeah, you want to jump out Boy, early. Especially with as many runs as we've seen. Yeah. And it's a full count now with two down. Harris with the pitch, looking at the runner at second. Outside and a walk. Keyshard. And that's one of the pairs, what happened. The ball falling in in the outfield. You force your pitchers to make a lot of other pitches. And then you got to force them to get four out this inning. You're giving them four outs. The light, the twilight just got a little better. It didn't take long for it to get a little better. He should be able to see the ball a lot better now. Vargas up to bat now for the Grambling Tigers. Inside. See now what happened, invariable pitchers tried to make sure they get out by themselves. Overthrow, lose that, foot, uh, that mechanics. And when you still got to stay within the system, put, force him to put the ball in play. Vargas from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hits the inside part of the plate for a strike. Yesterday, Vargas, a couple of hits in the ball game and a couple of walks. And 
And Vargas was hit by the pitch. See, this, is, the pitcher's in all kind of pickle right now because of that, uh, that play not being made. As the bases are jammed now with Tigers. And now Tame or Mean out. Tigers. <laughs> 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 and uh, Vargas being looked at right now. You have to shake that one off. You know, you get hit by a ball going at a certain velocity, and that'll leave a sting for you. Yeah. But he'll be okay. Let's look at that again. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. right Ooh on the toe. Yes, yeah, so yeah, so that hurts. Yeah, that hurts. And then you, you're dealing with toenails and all of that. So you, this is not just a, a walk in the park. <laughs> right. <laughs> Chris Marcellus coming up to the plate now for the Grambling Tigers. He was hit by a pitch yesterday. That pitch in there for a strike. What kind of a drive is it from Baton Rouge to Atlanta? Oh, about eight hours. And this one gets away from the catcher. A run scores for the Grambling Tigers, and it's now three to nothing. Guichard moves over to third. Vargas moves to second. And one thing that Southern cannot afford to do is put themselves in a big hole early. Yeah, it's... It makes it a little hard to dig yourself out. Here's a pitch, that one missing for a ball. In that game that they lost 13 to six earlier in the year, they fell behind three to nothing in the first inning. Uh -huh. Or I should say they were on top three to nothing and then Grambling went on to score seven in the fourth. And that was really the deciding inning that really put it away for the Grambling Tigers. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Harris is just having all kind of problems right now. He's trying to find his mechanic. Here's a pitch. That one in there for a strike. Count is full at three and two. Guichard at third. Vargas at second. Marcellus at the plate. The catcher swung on and missed for strike three. It's been a rough inning, but all three outs were all strikeouts. Yes. So for the Grambling Tigers, three runs off of three hits, no errors, and two men left on base. We now go to the second inning with the score, three to nothing, Grambling on top. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. and Lisa are ready to buy the home of their dreams. That's serious money, Gigi. It's okay. I feel you. And Rocket can help with that. When you buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, you can get up to $10,000 cash toward closing with Rocket Mortgage. It's time to start your own legacy. You got this, and Rocket's got you. Visit onlywithrocket.com to get started today. 
Back at Russ Chandler Stadium here in Atlanta. Three to nothing, Tigers on top. And there you see fans watching the game. And they are behind the Southern University dugouts. Enjoying the contest here. And we are glad you could join us for game four. Final game of day two of the tournament. We'll have four more tomorrow. And if necessary, we'll have one or two on Saturday. But it depends on what happens tomorrow evening. I don't know tomorrow evening is all about what the two teams that lose or win can do. Because if Grambling or Southern, which are one of these teams, lose, they'll have to go play Bethune-Cookman. And the winner of that game will have to win twice in order to get to the championship game. And somebody's got to go and fit that, that bill Yep. when it's all over. When somebody gets 27 outs, or if they score enough run, 21 outs. <laughs> Connor Rudy, 6'4", 4 ERA. Nice recovery. Nice recovery there by Cameron Buford. Buford. Radcliffe up to bat now for Southern University. Got him swinging for a strike. Championship game at 1 p.m. on Sunday. If we play Saturday baseball, it will be at noon and 3 p.m. So at least there was no 9 o'clock game. Here's a shot, and that's going to be to... Gishard throws it over to Buford. See, the pitcher the is throwing a lot of strike, and he's getting a lot of swings from Southern where they're not, you know, he's making quick innings because he's throwing strikes. Now Jonathan Evans to the plate. 254 ERA, and here's a shot right to Guichard. Long throw to Buford, and he gets him out. Six to three, one, two, three for the Grambling Tigers. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. We go to the bottom of the second. Three nothing, Grambling. join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. Beautiful sight in Midtown Atlanta, the Google Building sitting off in the distance in left field here at Russ Chandler Stadium. And on the mound still for the Southern Jaguars, Antoine Harris. Coming to the plate now for the Grambling Tigers, Terry Burrell the third, And uh, Grambling nearly batted around in the first inning. He's, as a matter of fact, Burrell is the ninth bat in the, in the nine hole. Well, that's true. I got a text from someone, and they said, why don't you talk about the Southern Gremlin rivalry? And uh, and I guess I hadn't spent a lot of time because we just in the third, second, second inning. Second inning, yeah. <laughs> we just got into the second <laughs> inning, yeah. 
just got there. Sky high on this one. Going to see who's going to be able to get to it. And coming down with the catch. Armstrong can Armstrong. see the ball a lot better now. Yeah. Twilight is tough. It's, it's tough for major leaguers. You know, so here's young people who don't play a lot of night games to start with. You got me? Yeah. But coming to the plate now. Will be Tiger Borum. Missing on the first pitch. You know, the, the t Southern Gremlin rivalry really is rich in tradition. Before, uh, you know, we our president, Mr. Clark, J.S. Clark, in 1918, he was the baseball coach. Oh, yeah. He was before Prez was the baseball coach at Gremlin. Yep. So uh, black college presidents used to be head baseball coach. Absolutely. Because baseball was king at historical black colleges. That's right. And you know, and a lot of that, it was because of the fact that there was more accessibility for baseball. Right, you exactly. Know? And so when you start looking at some of the, you know, the great history between, I mean, and we talked about this yesterday, you know, up until, what'd you say, 2003, I think it was, Grambling, Jackson, or Southern had all won Dwight champions, set Dwight championships. Yeah. Foul territory caught. And that is Evans with the catch. Two outs now here in the second. And that happened because it's particularly at Southern and Grambling because the presidents had interest in it. That's right. You know. Uh, but. Uh, and look at how, you know, and, you know, we also have to look at this for what it is. African-American athletes did not have the accessibility to go other places. That's right. And so that's why you saw a lot of major leaguers that have big names that were going to your Gramblings and your Jacksons and your Southern Universities. That's right. And remember, the Negro League was built on getting players from historical black colleges. Absolutely. Down on the East Coast in the Carolinas and Virginia and places like that. They got black kid players from the college's campus and then they take them south to train and they would break camp and go play in the Negro Leagues, mm -hmm. you know. Gosh, you'd be here all night just talking about some of the great baseball players that came out of those schools. And here's a shot in the left center field that's going to fall for a base hit. First hit of the second inning. And now Trevor Hatton comes to the plate. Well, I, I remember when I was a freshman, I was in awe that President Ralph Jones was the coach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see the gentleman, and the man is the president, and he's the coach of the That's right. baseball team. And he had some really good players. I, but we had good players at Southern. You know. I, I used to uh, talk with his son who uh, has passed away, and his son just talked about just how knowledgeable he was about the game of baseball. Yeah. 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 That one just missing for a ball. See, he had an advantage when he was president because being president, he could make calls or people could call and say, Mr. President, I got a hell of a player. He could, yeah. he could make things happen, you know. Swung on and missed. A lot of rich tradition that uh, you see in college baseball came from the HBCUs. There's no question about that. Oh, yeah. There's a pitch. Missing in. And now, of course, the overthrow would, al would allow Kyle Walker to move all the way over to third. Take a look at the replay here on this throw. Not a bad throw. The, the slide disrupted him, but that was not, the error should be on the second baseman and not the catcher because it was a catchable ball. Well, was that a, the shortstop that was trying second, to catch the ball? Second baseman. Okay.
So an E4. And now one error in the ball game for Southern. Swung on a miss, and the inning is over. Four strikeouts <laughs> for young Antoine Harris. So for Southern, for Gramley. No runs, one hit, one air, and one man left. We now go to the third inning. Grambling three, Southern nothing. We'll take this time out. Back after this. Hydration dropping. Rapid rehydration initiated. Unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes. Rapid rehydration to get you back on your game. Gator Light. Now available in powder and Gator Light Zero Sugar. Southern University fans enjoying themselves. Got some good second line music going on right here. Louisiana right here in Atlanta. These two teams from the boot celebrate any, any chance that they can get. That's right. It's the second line. Man, I did not even know what that was when I came to Louisiana. But now you do. Man, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a wedding. One of my one of my very good friends who's from New Orleans. Went, uh, and... Uh, he, when they got married, they had a second line band at the oh, wedding. My uh, it was just, it was the most incredible thing I'd seen. Yeah, oh yeah, they know how to do it down there. I'm trying to tell you, it was really great. The culture and music, the food. Yeah. I gained 15 pounds just getting to the city limits. <laughs> Sheesh. Uh, uh, Pitching there for a strike between beignets and po' boys. Oh and, my goodness. Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah. I think you got to go on a diet just to. They say the music is still playing, okay. We got Hunter Tab is the hitter right now. Tab has been around this program for a little while. Yeah. Outside. If we could go back to the uh, Southern Gremlin tradition, uh, have a little chopper. Yeah. Long throw over, and it is in time. This is a case where the shortstop realized I got a runner that's not the most fleet runner. I'm going to back up and make the play. Normally, you wouldn't do that. Most runners in this league, you can't back up and make that play and get them at first. The key shot had to make the long throw over to Buford. Right. Now there is one out. This shot goes into left field. Just past the outstretched arms. There you go, make that turn. There you go. I love that. J.J. Rowland on first base. Coach Kidd, is that a hallmark of Southern baseball, that wide that turn coming around first? That's it, but we did it. Because we do it because, or well, we did it because if that outfielder bob over the ball, we encourage them to go to second. And, we, and encourage them, don't worry about what happened. This is why we're doing it. We're gonna force them to make mistakes because they know you're coming around there. And you know, when we would play Gremlin, when they had all those speed guys. Oh my God. Oh, they had guys that could run like you wouldn't believe. But you know. Our, our coach, Emory Hines, said we're going to keep him from running. We're going to keep him off bases. 
that's the way you keep him from running. We talked about Emory Hines. His yeah. uh, last year coaching was right around what 1976. 76, about the yeah. Yep. Yeah. And after that, Leroy Boyd. Leroy Boyd, yep. Yeah. Leroy Boyd coached the team, and then your name starts showing up in the 80s. 84, August of 84 is when I took over. But you know, we, you talked about black baseball and historical black college. Just think a Hall of Famer like Lou Brock had to walk on that Southern. Wow. <laughs> <Old trouble. laughs> Four, six, three, double play. The inning is over, and the Grambling Tigers. Boys, showed you when the pitcher throws strikes. You got a chance to do things. Yep. Yeah. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left on. We go to the third inning, three nothing, Grambling on top. Back after this. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal's going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. 5G boss mode activate. Smile, you're on Cricket. We are a limitless future. Opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Great shot of Midtown High Rises here in Atlanta. And behind the fans there, the concession stands, and that's one of the favorite places that I like to go to, <laughs> baseball stadiums. Keelan Mack yeah. up to bat. You know, and that's something else. You start talking about the how concessions have grown in major league parks and in college parks. You know, it used to be the regular diet of peanuts and hot dogs and popcorn and no more. There's all kinds of delicacies when you go to the ballpark now. Not just your nachos and things, but you know, you've got, you know, specialty dogs and you've got, you know, specialty items when you go to a lot of these parks now. Even colleges, it's just, it's no longer just about a few things here and there. Keelan Mack lifts this one up in the air and it goes foul. I agree with you. Yep. And that's one of the great things. You see a lot of of these uh, ballparks now who have just uh, really just boomed. And, you know, concessions, they go back into the Roman days, you know, when they gave out free bread when they were having mm -hmm. a lot of the, the challenges and things there in the Roman days. Yeah. Well, you know, the concession is big business. Man, huge. <laughs> Man, <laughs> as some in the park, a bottle of water is $10. Man. You know, it just don't make sense. You got to get financial aid just to get yeah, concessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Santoria, I heard the, the bread stand at the at the Coliseum was the place to be at. Yeah, well, it, as a matter of fact, it was. They would hand out free bread to everybody, man. That was the lick. <clears throat> you got to make a lot of bread for those in the Coliseum. You being from the, the, the state of uh, Wisconsin, the Duke cheese is big up in that part of the world. Absolutely. Cheese, brats, sausages. Yeah. Ooh, that one goes right into the uh, backstop. Might have caused a little damage there for a minute. But, yeah, cheese brats especially was huge at, uh, you know, where the Brewers play at. Yeah. Nothing like a good bratwurst with a little mustard on it. Oh, great. Yeah. Here's a shot by Keelan Mack to right field. Up, up, and return of the Mack. The return of the Mack. Keelan Mack does it again. He did it yesterday yeah. and now again here against Southern University. And it's now 4 nothing. A blast into right field, Coach. He, took, he didn't overswing, 
And that's what you look for because when they overswing, they messed up their rhythm. But he had really good rhythm to the ball. And consequently, so if we watch here, he's really nice. Try to go in. I said stay away. Look at that swing. This is a the, the punishment you get for trying to pitch in and miss. Yeah. Stay away. You, you don't have that problem. Antoine Harris with a great pitch for a I strike. See, I see where Chris has got someone warming up in the bullpen. Yeah, you said Harris maybe a few innings. Well, I, yeah, he wasn't he wasn't going to look for a whole lot of innings out of Harris. Well, Harris is ahead in the count now in Cameron Buford, 0-2. And, and boy, that could do something for a young man's confidence after giving up a home run being ahead 0-2. Here is the pitch. Strike three! Antoine Harris comes back and gets another K. That's five strikeouts for Antoine. If that fly ball had not been misjudged or got lost in the twilight, we would have really been in good shape with Harris. Shot down the third baseline because foul. he hadn't pitched that bad. No, you, you know, look at it. He, uh, you know, he gave up those three hits. Those those three hits, yeah, yeah the three it. runs rather. And then, of course, in that last inning, didn't give up a run. He had another strikeout, and then a strikeout here. Five strikeouts. Yeah. You look at it uh, on the season. He's got thirty-seven. I'm saying thirty-seven strikeouts on the season. Yeah. Antoine Harris, Jr. from Chalmette, Louisiana. Went to Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. They played some pretty good ball over there. Oh, yeah, pretty good ball. That pitch just missed for a ball. Well, not only do you look for great players to come, but of course you have coaches and you have the coaching tree. Yeah. Uh, you had a great coaching tree at uh, Southern University. Strike three, number six. I tell you, we really were f and, and I had planned to have a good coaching tree because I wanted people to put people out there that could help. And I did it mainly, well, I've got some in college and high school, but I have mainly people going to pro baseball and you know what the mark of a lot of kids who are going to go in the major league gonna they're gonna come to the tree that we sent out there you that's know? right they are making decision on players pitch just a little bit low That pitch got away. So Antoine Harris, the season high, he had six strikeouts, or I should say, he had six strikeouts against Pond Bluff on April the 30th. Oh, With one more strikeout, he'll have his season high. Really? He'll beat his season high, yeah, yeah. six already. He had five in the game against McNeese earlier in the season. Swung on, foul. And to be honest with you, he would have been better off if he was getting guys to hit the ball on the ground like the pitcher from Grambling is. Mm -hmm. He's he's really doing a good job getting quick outs with hit, getting them to hit ground balls. Strikeouts look good, but you got to throw a lot of pitches to strike people out.
And batter got away from him. And that's what happened when you're a strikeout pitcher. You walk people. Talk about walking and during the course of the year, 33 walks. Yeah. Well, that one got away. And, and you get wild pitches and pass balls. And you got one going to third. Throw not in time, but great job by Hunter Tab not letting that ball get away from him. Otherwise, that would have been another run score. Yeah. That pitch again. You know, count that as a pass ball. A no, wild, pitch. wild pitch. Wild pitch. Here's a shot in the air. This one going into right field. And it's dropped in fair territory. E9. The way he. He, uh. Boy, that's hard luck pitching. Man. That was the third out of the inning, and now Antoine Harris is going to stay in there. And That's twice it would have been the third out. Yep. Here comes their coach. If we can show that play again, why? I can tell people why he dropped the ball. You don't have it? Okay, we don't have it, so, uh, but he... He just didn't do his, his fundamental right. Balls like that, you want to turn your ball where you can have the palm of your hand up. He pretty much had the palm of his hand down. Well, that can mess with your psyche a little bit. Yeah. You know, you, you right there should have been the third out. Yeah. Then you're out of the inning. Instead, drop, score, run. You're down 5 nothing now. Right. Here's a pitch, swung on and hit down the third baseline, first baseline, foul. I mean, in retrospect, you look at this, Antoine Harris has already tied his season high in strikeouts. Yes. The other side of that is two fielding errors have also cost a couple of runs and a couple of uh, Aaron pitches yes. cost you some base runners. So. Oh, yeah. It hadn't been because they hit, other than that solo home run, by Mac, you know, it's not, he hadn't done bad. When you make errors, pitchers start stop, stop pitching the contact. Yeah. They, they become afraid. Good pitch, just missing. Coach, at 5 nothing. at what point do you start looking at the bullpen? Well, he's looking at it now. I was thinking he was looking about four innings out of Harris. And, uh, you know, he's just pitched in hard, bad luck. That's a strike. And he's giving him quality inning. It's just most of the problem and his problem is because of lack of support defensively. That one's in there for strike number seven. He has now eclipsed his season high of six strikeouts. Two runs, one hit, one air, one man left on base. And for Antoine Harris, that is strikeout number seven here in this ball game. But more damage is done. Five to nothing. Grambling on top. Back after this.
HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's retool your school program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool your school. We're powered by purpose. Malik and Lisa are ready to buy the home of their dreams. That's serious money, Gigi. It's okay. I feel you. And Rocket can help with that. When you buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, you can get up to $10,000 cash toward closing with Rocket Mortgage. It's time to start your own legacy. You got this, and Rocket's got you. Visit onlywithrocket.com to get started today. Back here at Russ Chandler Stadium here in Atlanta, Georgia, McNeese Baseball Park. Jalen Armstrong coming up to bat now for Southern University. Jaguars trailing here, five nothing. They got to start making making things happen offensively. And coach, when you're down five to nothing, there's no magic hit for five runs, but you got to take things one thing at a time. First thing is you got to get Grambling's bats off the field. Yeah. Here's a shot left field foul. And you got to get your first base runner on. Yep. Which they hadn't been able to do. You only had one hit in this entire game. Right. So you got to get some runners on. Now, the pitcher from Gremlin has a relatively low pitch count because Southern has been taking a lot of quick swings, putting the ball in play. That's 29 pitches right there. Yeah, 29. And we're going into the fourth inning. So that tells you they've been swinging a lot at first pitches and, you know. Inside part of the plate. No, they called the ball. A strike. Calling a strike. Yep, right there. He was, did you see how hesitant he was though? Is it, well, the scoreboard said three and two. I don't, I didn't think it was three and two. Well, nonetheless, we have a base runner on the path for Southern University. At this point, you take what you can get. Yeah, and walks are usually uh, not a good thing for pitchers. 65%, 63% of the time, they score. Here's a Look shot in the center field, and that gets things started for the Jaguars. Runners at first and second now after the single by Hendricks. Walks usually start stuff. And after the first three innings, the Jaguars, I'm sure, are in the mood to start some stuff. That's right. a strike the baseball crowd is a little different yeah <laughs> Ooh, inside well this Coach. game this game started late in the evening yeah it's gonna be a late night for these guys yeah Pierre is came out and actually is a center fielder to get back even more. Guy said he was as far as he could go. <laughs> yeah. Here's a shot in the right field. That's going to be a base hit. This could score a run. No, they're going to hold him up at third base. And now Southern has the badge juiced. The only reason he didn't score, Jalen, he didn't look at where the right fielder was. You got to know that ball is not going to be caught. And this is why. See, look at him at second. 
we watch him. See, that ball never going to have a chance to be caught. Look, never going to be caught. Never. But so he has no chance of scoring because he never gave him his, himself a chance. You got to read everything. And remember, it was the base on ball. Just that started, started the walk. It. That's right. 63% of the time, that run is scored. Now the assistant coach talking to. The pitcher to is sick, look like. I saw him. Good time, huh? Yeah, I tell you what, Southern having some good times here in the fourth inning. Bases loaded and nobody out. They have got to take advantage of this. The last thing you want is something in the infield that could cause you to get out at home. That's a miss for a ball. You don't want another walk here if you're Grambling. Sanchez, three home runs on the year. Here's a pitch. Swung on. This is going to be into center field. A run should score. This one's hit pretty deep. Here comes the throw. He's going to try to go over to third base, and it's not in time. That's good Southern base scores. running. Good base running. Both runners advance. And the run scored that was walked 63% of the time. Well, the percentages win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One out, but there's still runners at second and third. And that's O'Neill Burgos at second, Hendricks at third. Well, the Jags have put themselves in pretty good position here in this fourth inning after a disastrous first three innings. It's all about the thirds. Swung on and miss. And history of this tournament has taught us no lead is safe. No lead is safe. You'll be a five, down five runs in the bottom of the ninth inning and win the game. <laughs> if they walk the first three, make it easy. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be a strike. He's got to stay in there and put the ball in play. If you're going to play against a left-hand pitcher, you got to stay in there and put the ball in play. you got to have strong will here. He's not throwing hard enough to hurt you if he hits you. Up high. That's what I used to make give my kids confidence. He's not throwing hard enough to hurt you if he hits you. Stay in there. Wouldn't be surprised here, though, if... He comes back to the inside. Move from inside out. He's going to come back with a curveball here. There it is. And he misses. Two up, two down. Now he's trying to bring his, somebody in. Maybe his right fielder. Here's a shot down the third baseline, foul. And Radcliffe sticks in there. The runner went back to third on that. He should have been coming. Boy. See, even if the guy catches the ball the way it's hit, he can't throw you out if you're running home. Radcliffe from the Windy City. Outside, and now the count is full. His dad is here tonight, too. His dad said he's never seen anything like this. He said, we're missing this in Chicago. Pretty quick flight from Chicago to Atlanta. Here's a pitch. Oh! This one, he got him on a strike. And that's the second out. Right, 
What a pitch here by Connor Rooney. Got him right there at the knees. That was a good pitch. Didn't want to hit. He didn't want to hit. Wow, right there above the knee. If you wanted to hit, you would have swung that bat. You got to fight to live for another day. That's going to be a, oh, a ball. 5-1 the score. You got to get a run in here. Well, you don't want to start leaving men on the bags. Well, Southern is pretty uh, notorious for that this year. They struggle with leaving men on bases. That one low. That one in there for a strike. That's a pretty good pitch right there. You got to take it because you're not looking for that pitch. And it's the first strike, so you're not under any obligation to swing at it. Outside for a ball. Should Evans get on base, Hunter Tab will be coming up. Straight up. And it comes down to D Sharp. I thought it was three outs. No, they, they, it was interference. Oh, interference, okay. Nice job by Buford coming over to get the catch. So we go now to the bottom of the fourth inning, 5-1, Grambling on top. We'll take this time out back after this. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look, to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way.
Tiger Borum up to bat for the Grambling Tigers here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hey, we got to go back and explain something because in the fourth inning, in the top half of the fourth, there was catcher's interference, and we did not we did not know this until we just found out. And so catcher's interference happened with Sanchez uh, when he hit the ball, and they put him on first. Right. Well, the 26 was the one, the right fielder was the one that, that got had the interference because when he swung, he hit the ball, the shortstop caught it, but because it was catcher's interference, they moved everybody up except the run at third base. And that's why if we could have gotten into our PA announcer, they could have announced it so everybody would have known exactly what happened. But that's something we're gonna work on. Yeah. So, Hunter Tab, of course, fly down to, I should say, in foul territory to Buford, and that's a strikeout. Yeah. New pitcher in the ball game, by the way, for Southern University, and that is Jaden Bresso. Walker coming up to bat. Shot down the first baseline. Easy play. And now Trevor Hatton coming to the plate. Do you have a chance to go to practice at Southern? You go quite a bit? No, I don't. I try to stay away. I'm not one of those coaches overlook over, so I stay away. Mm -hmm. I'll go visit Chris in his office, but don't I don't. go to practice too much. I don't, you know, because, you know, you just, every now and then I go, but I sit in the stands. I don't go nowhere near the, you know. Down toward the field. Yeah. I made the decision when I left coaching to not be in, in, in the coach's way. I know coaches won't let coaches, they, they're telling them everything. They're, they're overlooking. Listen, one thing I've been able to do. Shot down the third base line. It's going to be a tough throw, and he's safe. When I left through baseball, I was able to walk away. You know, was, I walked away. When I left coaching, I was able to walk away. A lot of people can't do it. It's tough. Yeah, you know, you hear a lot of coaches, especially if they've done it for a long time, they, you know, you could tell that they miss it. It could go through a period, almost a morning, you could say. And uh, they, they have a tough time transitioning from the everyday grind of coaching and then moving to where you're not coaching. And that's why I talk to Coach Ellis all the time, and he says, you know, when he retired, it was important for him to stay busy. It was important for him to keep on doing things. Coach Braddy, the same way. You know, he yeah. talks about staying busy and always involved in the community and things. Yeah. But they've never stopped growing the game either. No, I did. That's an out. That's a heck of a throw by the catcher. And Southern gets out of a jam. Heck of a throw. Great job by the shortstop coming over. That's great ball placement. You couldn't ask for a better throw. Good luck. 2-6, caught stealing. <laughs> and that's the third out of the inning. No runs, no hit. Well, no runs, one hit. No errors, and nobody left on base. Top for the five. Top five. It is five to one. Grambling on top. Back after this.
Beautiful evening here in Atlanta. Five to one, our score. Grambling on top. JJ Rowland on for the Southern Jaguars at the plate. First pitch swung on and foul. Let's go down on the field. Charles Bishop with Coach Davin Pierre. Coach Pierre, uh, talk about uh, your pitcher, Connor Rudy. Uh, he's had a, uh, a great uh, first few innings here for you. Well, he's getting ahead, throwing strikes, and, you know, he's mixing pitches, and uh, he's doing exactly what we want him to do. We just got to keep defending behind him, man, and, and get some more runs. This game is uh, far from over with. Uh, you mentioned get some more runs. Or what are some things that you guys got to do uh, once you're at the plate? Uh, we just got to be more patient at the plate and uh, swing at quality pitches in the zone. I think we're taking some, uh, some strikes, man, that we should be swinging at, but – other than that, man, I like what we're doing right now, and, you know, we'll figure it out. Sure thing. Thanks, Coach. Coach, you were just talking about that. You got to take some of those strikes that they're throwing across the plate. Yeah. Uh, sudden, yeah. But you know what? You know, that that pitcher has really done a good job for Grambling. I mean, he stayed within himself, and he did just enough. Keyshark, long throw in time. Well, he's had some great throws. Making the routine plays, you know. It's routine for you guys, but if, if I try to do some of that stuff, oh, they, no, they would have be. to pick me up off the ground. There wouldn't be any routine. Yeah, no. This is for the young at heart. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm old at heart. <laughs> Justin Wiley now coming on to hit. One out here. But just think about those kids from Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, uh, Venezuela, now the country of Colombia, uh, Nicaragua, Mexico. Uh, these kids are playing baseball in the low in Cuba in the low a low man number, and they're getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, I can say it because I've been with in those areas, some in those areas, where it. We're teaching baseball. Mm -hmm. Here's a shot in the right field. This one's got some distance and is caught. What a catch by the right fielder. And that's going to be Trevor Hatton. He had to get on his horses to catch that one. If you go, you got to hit it over the fence. Look like to get it out of here. That was a pretty good swing, though. Man, that was a really good swing. Right, yeah, good swing. Boy, Trevor Hatton just really had to jump on his horses to get that outstretch his arm and able to get the get, get the catch. Chopper is going to go past the outstretched arm of Guichard. Armstrong made the turn. Southern they, has a man aboard. They needed Armstrong hitting when they had those men in second and third with one out. I mean, he had, the last inning, he had that walk. Yeah. yeah. Good pitch. I'll tell you what, I've seen a lot of people coming from the concession stand. They got warm pretzels and chicken fingers. Yeah, they're big. Santori, I noticed it too. They're making it hard for a brother down here. Oh, man, I'm trying yeah. to tell you, look. <laughs> got to fast and pray, brother, fast and pray. <laughs> Here's the throw. It's, is it in time? No. Good throw, just to the out, ooh, just to the outside a little bit. So stolen base for Armstrong. Two outs. Chopper. Throw good. Inning over. They can't get good swing with runners in score position. Vargas with the throw. And the third out of the inning. No runs, no hits. 
one hit, no errors, and one left. We go now to the top half of the inning, bottom of the inning, with the score five to one. Back after this. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal's going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. 5G boss mode activate. Smile, you're on Cricket. Fans from a uh, local team enjoying the game here in the stadium. And man, great crowd on hand, enjoying this incredible baseball game and incredible atmosphere. Brasso still on the mound. Outside for a ball. Start things out. Highs for Brasso. He's got hit four strikeouts against Jackson State in February. He's uh, pitched four and a third. This has been most innings he's pitched in a game. He got the win against Jackson back on February the 17th after pitching three. And then got a win against Grambling March 18th after pitching four innings. Got wins against Prairie View and Dillard this year. Even though he hasn't pitched more than four and a third before, he's been effective. Yes, he's done a good job. If he can hold them, Southern has got a chance. He got some action against uh, Iowa, in which that game was 20 to 8 early in the season. That was in March. And a lot of the Northern teams will travel south. Right. Notre Dame has been known for doing that. Of course, Iowa, Indiana, Michigan. I know at one point in time, Michigan went on the road for three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I know they stayed on the West Coast for a week and a half out there in California because it's just too cold to play right, certain times of the year. Yep. So one runner aboard, a walk. We remember walks again. And let's look at it. If he's able to hold Gremlin, Gremlin at some point is going to the bullpen. Mm -hmm. And that's the Achilles heel for a lot of these teams when they have to go to the bullpen. That's right. And, you know, I talked to Coach Pierre, and that's one of the things he talked about. He said, we want to get as many pitches out of our starter as possible. Right. Because if we don't have to go to the bullpen, we save arms, and that really helps you when you have to get deep into the tournament. That pitch is a strike. And the deeper you go, the more arms you really need. Oh, you definitely need them. And remember, Coach told you he's trying to find a third starter. That means he got two pitches. That's right. He could depend on. People in the SEC can't find a third starter. It's difficult at times. Yeah. Yeah. Can't find that third starter. You know, we were talking to LSU's head coach on, on the air, and one of the things that he talked about was just that, you know, when you couple injuries mm -hmm. to go along with other things, it's, it's really tough. Right. And, you know, now you have to depend on closers and mid-relievers and all this other kind of thing to really try to pick up the slack. And they say, that's a strike. Second strikeout for Brasso. Ninth strikeout for Southern Pitching tonight. Yep. That was close. Finding a closer sometime is like asking the girlfriend to be as good a cook as your mother was. <laughs> I, I, have, I have no response to that. 
But I'm saying, you know, that's how difficult it is to find a closer. I'm using a, a, narr- a, a, a narrative. Analogy, to, yeah. Analogy. Yeah. To show you how difficult it is. It is. It, it is difficult. Girlfriends, it's going to be hard to be as good as cook as mom was. So that's how hard it's been to find closers. Coach, that yeah. was classic. I'm going to remember that one. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to remember that right, Charles. <laughs> Uh, Charles Edmond will be on tomorrow for the first two games starting at 9 a.m. FAMU and Prairie View in an elimination game. Bethune-Cookman will play the loser of this game in an elimination game at noon. And trust me, these coaches have tried everything to find, to solve that problem with a closer. You know, they've tried everything. Here's a shot in the left field. That's a base hit. Mack moves over to second. Keith Sharp with his first hit of the game, but he's been on base right once here, Tiger, with a walk. Go, we just talked about it. You get a walk? Uh-huh. That walk, yeah. You know, some coaches have stopped short of maybe using that best pitcher to put in the bullpen. But then they say, we can't get to him. If we got someone else, mm-hmm. we will never be able to get to it. You got me? Okay. So it's, it's, it's a challenging thing. What are you looking for in a good, let's say, mid-relief pitcher? Well, a mid-reliever got to be able to throw strikes, and you want somebody who can throw ground balls. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have to throw hard. Mm-hmm. But if he can come in and get ground balls and throw strikes, that way we need – to not be piling runners on bases mm-hmm. with a with a, a middle reliever. Hey, we need that same starters and closers always get a lot of the shine, but mid relievers sometimes can get lost in the shuffle. Oh yeah, a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Because they have to come and stop the rain or or the bleeding mm-hmm. as they use. Here's a shot. Four, six, three for the Jaguars to get out of the inning. It's a big double play. No runs, no hits, no errors, one man remaining. Halfway through it, we go now to the top of the, to the, uh, top of the six, five, one, Grambling. Back here, top of the sixth inning, five to one is our score. Brambling Tigers on top of Southern University, getting ready to come to the plate for Southern. The first baseman, O'Neal Burgos. Let's go down on the sideline, or I should say, down into the dugout for Southern University. Charles Bishop, along with the head coach of Southern, Chris Crenshaw. Coach Crenshaw, down five one. Uh, what are some things that your uh, hitters need to do to get to Connor Rudy here? Uh, we gotta have some better bats, and we gotta uh, keep putting zeros up. 
Coach, uh, your outfielders had some issues uh, with uh, some of the fly balls in the early innings. Kind of what happened? Talk us through that. Um, the ball was hit high above the lights. You say you lost it. It comes from um, we didn't get to practice on the field, but there's not an excuse. It should have been communication with the outfielders on pointing the ball out so he could find it. Sure thing, Coach. Thank you. All right, Coach Chris Crenshaw joining us down in the dugout with Charles Bishop. Chris is not a man of many words. I was going to say that. He didn't. He doesn't have a lot of words, does he? <laughs> no, he doesn't talk a lot. He's a big, jolly baby. <laughs> That's what I call him. That pitch is a ball. What, what is, what's one of the... What's a question that coaches ask you the most about when they want to get some insight from you? Uh, that's a good question. Now, the most they, I get a, <laughs> you know, can I go back a little? Sure. What they used to when I was coaching, they used to ask me a lot about how do you put a team together. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I always say, you build with a pit with pitching, and then you build with hitters, and then you build up the middle. You want to build catching, pitching, shortstop, center fielder. You want to be strong up the middle. Then you have to have bats on the corner, third, first, left and right field. And that's how I tell them. But I would tell. Young people, young young coaches, go get as many quality homes as you can. Yeah. Because you need them. Then later on, how do you manage? How do you manage a team? Which is, and it's different for different people. You know, the way I manage, most people don't want to manage that way. You got me? Mm -hmm. You know. But you definitely have to have an eye for talent. Uh, you know, I don't think there's a question about that. A what? An eye for talent. You oh, an eye, oh, no, you need an eye for talent. Yeah, you got to have an eye for talent. Oh, no, there, you, there's no denying it. And you, you can't, if they ask you, you, you can tell them that, but they, you can't help them if yeah. they don't have it. That's right. See, that's one of the things, my strong suit, because I coached basketball before. I went into be, be the baseball And coach. not a lot of people know that about you. Right. And the thing is, I, I did very well recruiting. And the coach said, if I had known I'd have hired you five years earlier, <laughs> you would have saved my job. Foul ball. So, but I always had, had an eye for talent. And I was fortunate. When I went out recruiting, I only need to see a kid one time. Mm -hmm. Most people can't do that. Yeah, that's difficult because, you know, you have a lot of, especially now there's a lot of assessment. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and now because you have all of these rules and a lot of yeah, things right. with, you know, NILs and you have the portal and you have this and that and the other, you really want to make sure the player that you're getting. Or oh, you better make sure now. You can't make a mistake now. Yeah, it's tough. Well, you got to eat it. Here's a oh, shot in the right field. It's up, it's up, and Radcliffe gets a home run for the Southern Jaguars. A bomb in the right field for Radcliffe. Yeah. It's now five to three. I won! I, I won! of a shot by Radcliffe. That his dad is in the house. His dad is in the house with the gold cap on. Cheering on his son, and he's got something to celebrate about after that bomb in the right field. He came all the way from Chicago to the ATL just to see his son. And that is the shot that Southern needed. Well, Look at that again. He just turned on that one and it was out. 
Maybe it was the, with Charles talking to Chris, and Chris being so fired up in the conversation he had. <laughs> Chris was fired up. I, I think that's what it was, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> you fired him up, Coach. <laughs> coach, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm, it is remarkable the way the balls are flying out the right field. Uh, the home runs, especially at night, the late game, yeah, yeah, the yeah. way they fly out the right field. And they don't do nothing to them unless you hit them right down the line. You know, and I'm looking at the yeah. flagpole just it's to still, the, yeah. the, just short of center field, just to the left there, and there's no wind. But the balls carry, you know, the urban stream to right field is there. What do you call that again, Charles? Urban. The urban jet stream. <laughs> jet stream. <laughs> that was in the trees. <laughs> Landing in the trees. But remember, even Coach Pierre said 5-1 lead wasn't you know, not safe. not over. Absolutely not. And now it's 5-3 to three inside on that pitch for a strike. And by the way, there's only one out here. Top of the sixth inning. Baseball is a game of thirds. What are you doing that first third, second third, and then the final third? Well, you know, again, we've been we spent a lot of time talking about pitching up here, and we talk about knowing what's going on in the bullpen. We already know that something's going to happen. Yeah. And you just and the poor coaches don't know what they're going to get. Got some guys stretching down there, but not throwing it for Bramley. Yeah, he hoping, with him having the lead, he's still hoping he can get an inning or so out of, out of this pitcher, so. And a Aaron pitch by Connor Rudy. It wouldn't be right if there, somebody didn't make a run. No way the game was just going to go like it is, 5-1. Inside for a ball, and that's a knock, another walk. Them walks will kill you. And now the tying run at the plate. Hunter Tab coming up. Just missing for a ball. Those softball girls are fired up. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> they play softball at Southern. That's a whole different culture altogether <laughs> with the softball team. Yeah, different culture. Oh, man, they got all kinds of things that are going in the dugout. Oh, my goodness. Runner goes. Here's the throw. Not in time. Oh, they no, say he no, got him. No, no, no. They no, say he got no. him at second. No, he's in. There's a swing. He dived too early. Oh, man. I, that's going to be tough. He dove too early. He dove too early. I, I this is you. why I don't like them guys head sliding. They go too early. Oh man, that's tough. He's in there. And they will review this. And now they will disappear into the bat cave and review the this. The bat cave? Yeah. <laughs> You look at this slide here. This is a tough call, but I think well, he got in. Yeah, he, he slid too early. But right there. He's in. 
it didn't look like, oh, that's a bang, bang. Bang, bang. Yeah, no, he's out. He's actually out. They can't overrule it. That's a bang, bang See what, bang that, play. what happened? That he slid too early and his left hand stopped him. That's right. That's what happened. They slide too early. Coach, did that, did that swipe tag, did it really sell the play? Yeah, well, the um, umpire's got a pretty good view. That's, yeah, he's in great position. Yeah, he's, he can't, he's not, and it, you see, he slid too early and his left hand stopped him. And he's looking right at it. He's looking down at it. That's going to be hard to overturn that. Yeah. <laughs> see, if he had started sliding right there, he gets in. And actually, if he would have started and just kept with his left hand out, he would have got in. Yeah. Because if you look at it, his left hand was actually ahead of him. Yeah, right. But because it stopped him. Look where his left hand is when he started that, when he was starting that slide. Look, look, look at where his left hand is. Stopped oh, man. Him, yeah. Yep. But we're still under a review here for well, to see over. whether or not. Uh, huh? It's going out. He's out. That's what it looked like. The verdict is in. I guess they're still talking about it. A long way out from the bat cave, back to the field. The verdict is in. He's out. And he's out. How could the producers be so right? Every time. And here comes Coach Crenshaw. He is not happy. He probably shouldn't have, he should have probably let it go and save, save his appeal. Yeah. Wow. We'll take a look at it one more time. Here's the throw. Slide too early. Well, caught stealing. That's the second out of the inning. Well, nonetheless, it has been a eventful sixth inning for the Jags. Here's a pitch, swung on foul. Deuce is wild on the board now. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here's a pitch. Swung on foul. Hunter Tab hadn't had one good swing. Tonight, yet he's got to have better swings than that. Yeah, he's over two at the plate, and he's really struggled trying to get the ball into play. Yes, he struggled. Let's see if he breaks out of the struggle. Shot thrown and out. Go, go, go. So for the Jags, two runs. One hit, no errors, and nobody left. Bottom of the six, Grambling on top, five to three. Back after this. We are a limitless future. 
opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. We now go to the bottom of the six, Grambling still out front here at the 2023 SWAC Baseball Tournament. First pitch to Chris Marcellus, just a bit off. Brasso still on the mound for Southern University. That pitch is in there for a strike. Marcellus, Burrell, and back to the top of the order with Borum. Up to bat for Grambling in this half of the inning. And this one's in the air. Looks like it'll go foul. And it's on top of the building, and then it falls down into the stands. How many baseballs do you go through in a game? Jeez, let alone, yeah. let alone a tournament. 50, 60, 70 dozen for this. Maybe 50 dozen. And a strikeout. For Brasso, that's his third strikeout. Here's Burrell with a shot in the center field. Makes the turn and he's safe at first. Ten strikeouts for Southern pitching today. That's a lot. Brasso has three. And, of course, the starter, which was Antoine Harris, he had seven. Here's a shot. Oh. Not going to get that at all. Why would he just catch it regular? He was only going to get one. See that? Look, just stay back and catch it regular. You're only going to get one. Oh, man. That's yeah, going to be an E3. Not going to get that. You only were going to get the out. You'd have had two outs. They've not played a clean game tonight. You're not going to get a shot at that after the uh, bobble. And now you got two aboard for Grambling. And Coach Pierre talking to his guys. Coach Davin Pierre was named the interim coach after head coach James Cooper got a job in the Yankee organization. Yeah. And uh, Coach Pierre is taking these guys to a 20 plus win season. And the number one seed, the number one seed in the Western division of the SWAT. He did well. Absolutely. He did call and ask for advice. He called me and asked for some advice which I thought was smart of him. Maybe I might have something, I don't know. I said, are you sure you think I know something? <laughs> I said, that's what I'm calling. I can see that conversation now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, that's what I'm calling. It's, you know, I'll have fun with him. Pretty much told him what I tell you. Go get you some pictures, you know. Find you some, if they give you money to get an assistant coach, get a good one. There's you a strike. Know. Well, I think the other thing, too, is is that when you get past the X's and O's, Coach Vasquez said it best, you, you got to have a passion for it and want to help 
the kids past the field. Right. And, you know, they got to want to be helped past the field. Yeah, they got to want to be helped, yeah. Just missing for a ball. You know, there's so many things that go on now, especially now with, you know, NIL deals and, you know, student athletes. There's a lot of things that you can't monitor sometimes, especially right. during the off season. And Social media. Oh, Shoot, that's goodness. another thing. That's a strike. And I, I heard one of the coaches talk to – Talk once in a seminar, and he said, "Social media will get someone's scholarship taken real quick, quick nowadays. real quick, real quick." Yeah. There's a shot in the left field. Walker is going to get some extra bases, and it looks like one run will come in. Two runs. That's going to be Terry Burrell. Now Born comes in, and Kyle Walker is safe at third. Triple for Kyle Walker. And that just landed in a sweet spot, Coach. Oh, yes, it did. Rolled all the way to the fence, and those guys were on their horses. Trevor Hatton will come to the plate now. Boy, those arrows will kill you. And one. Three. Yep. Just when you think you got a little momentum, boom. Yeah. But it's been that way. Somebody scored, the team come back with an answer. That error, that was that would have been the second out of the right, inning there. Right, right. And it's a big difference when you got two out. Yeah. Again, the pitcher doesn't try. When he made the error, it forced the pitcher to try and do something he's not capable of. Yeah. Overthrowing. You take him out of his element. Catchers are more or less the quarterbacks of the team. Yeah. They can cool people down and, you know, make them feel good about themselves. You know, pitchers are a different animal. Yeah. You know, you like, make a mistake behind them, they don't like that. Like kickers. <laughs> yeah. Here's a shot straight up, and this is going to go into center field. And caught. He lost. But I know he lost it. Well, he, he was, maybe he was trying to deke him. Maybe he was trying to deke him. Make him think he didn't know how many outs it was. So there's two outs here. And a heck of a throw in. Seven three, our score. Well, these two teams will be good and tired after this game. You swung on and missed. Ten thirty right now, East Coast. Still got the back third to go, and somebody's going to be playing at noon tomorrow. It's not bad. Swung on, miss. It'll be a foul. You see Mac over swinging now. That's what you want him doing to get him out. When he takes good swing, he's dangerous. He was dangerous yesterday in the seventh and eighth inning. He had a home run in that game. Now he's got a home run in this game. Because he took a nice, easy swing. And he strikes out. Two runs, two hits, one air, one man left for the Grambling Tigers. Seven to three, Tigers on top. We go now to the seventh inning, top seven. Southern coming up to bat.
Back here at Russ Chandler Stadium. Connor Rudy still on the mound for the Grambling Tigers. And J.J. Rollin at the plate. This one goes straight up in the air. Playable and caught. Vargas able to track that one down. And now Justin Watley coming up to the plate. Wiley hit into a double play back in the third inning and flew out to the right fielder back in the fifth. His third attempt tonight. That was a good pitch strike. That pitch just a little bit off. Connor Rudy. Like he's faced 21, 21 batters. Good pitch. Yeah, it tied him up on that one. Just missing four ball. That shot. Easy routine play. This pitcher's gotten a lot of ground balls tonight, which is what you want. Connor Rudy, 89 pitches. With two outs here in the seventh inning. That's nothing for what Pierre wants. He'll take 115 out of him tonight. It'd be good. He doesn't want to go down there to that bullpen. No, he doesn't. And right now, just everybody's still standing around yeah. down there. Yeah. That one's a strike. Coach, is it the fact that he's just keeping batters off balance as to why he's getting so many ground balls? Not really. It's that he's keeping it low in the zone. He hasn't been keeping it. All his pitches been really right around the knees, a little above the knees, and that's why he's getting a lot of ground balls. Here's a pitch. Because most of the pitches they've hit has been his fastball. They just haven't been able to do anything with it. Marcellus giving him the sign. Swung on and missed. There's a pitch. Swung on and hit. That's foul. You really got to have a good, a good catcher who understands uh, how to call a good game. Well, a catcher or somebody else calling it. Yep. Swung on. Chopper. Now it's going to be tough to throw him out. Or he pull the muscle. There oh, man. Go. Yep. And he's down. Armstrong is down. 4-3 on the putout. Well, and he's holding his head right now. He is in obvious pain. When you do a hamstring, you're going to be in obvious pain. And there's a trainer out there looking at Armstrong. And so while we have an opportunity and Armstrong is down, we will take this uh, timeout. Hope that Armstrong is okay. We'll take this time out. We'll be right back.
Cameron Buford coming to the plate. Let's go, Cam. Pitch a little bit low. Jaden Brasso, 48 pitches so far. Guichard on deck. Guichard one for two. Strikeout in a walk. Buford is one for three. Two RBI. Oh, look out. Right in the southern bullpen, and that, that'll wake you up real fast. Don't to hurt young people. They, they can get out of the way, but you and I could. Nice job by the shortstop. In time for the throw. That's a good play. Good play. Gishar coming up to the plate now. You know, we've had a couple of boo-boos, but we've had some really good plays in games today, haven't we? Absolutely. Well, you know, you go back to a game, even game one, you know, even though that game got away from Texas Southern. Yeah. But uh, even though it got away, it wasn't a blowout. And there were some good plays there. Right. You know, then you go to that Jackson State in, in Alabama, uh, the Jackson <laughs> State in Bethune game. Good grief. <laughs> Um, you need medicine for that game, then you needed medicine for Alabama State and oh, Bethune. Yeah. yeah. There's a shot. Caught. Hunter Tab stabbed it. Yeah, the Alabama State fam game was just incredible. Oh, yeah. So both, uh, you know, you look at what Bethune-Cookman did. They advanced, eliminated Jackson, one-run game. And Jackson, Heartbreak City in this tournament. You lose both games by a run. Heartbreak City. Man. I mean, your girlfriend dumping you the day before prom, Heartbreak oh, City. Oh, my goodness. How about before you get married, the Ooh. day before you get married? That's, Man, that's the problem you can recoup from that. You're young. Nice job by Brasso. <laughs> you guys are dropping some classics. <laughs> <laughs> three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We now go to the eighth inning. Start count outs. If you're grambling, six outs. Back after this. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. Hydration dropping. Rapid rehydration initiated. Unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes. Rapid rehydration to get you back on your game. Gator Light. Now available in powder and Gator Light Zero Sugar. Javier Martinez now into the ball game. You see his information there, right bottom of your screen, and Skyline in the back of it. And for Javier Martinez. 12 4 8 ERA, 1 and 3 on the season. He's pitched 31 innings. Twenty-six strikeouts. 
And for Martinez, he throws hard. He just has to have the control. <laughs> that sounds beautiful. I mean, he now he'll make your hand sting pretty good now. Yeah, but he, he control is this issue. Big guy. Oh yeah. He's had a couple biscuits and cheeseburgers now. Yeah, I could tell. Top of the eighth. Well, Martinez needs six outs here. Sometimes that could be a lifetime. Martinez coming on in the eighth. Hendricks up to bat. He can throw hard, but you see he's coming to the outside. Yeah. Hey, that gets in there for a strike. Not to the liking of the crowd. Not swing, good call, didn't swing. No. Nah, he didn't swing. It's popped up into right field. Playing the ball is Trevor Hatton, one down. And one of the things that I notice here about Martinez is that when that ball is coming to the outside, it just, especially if it leaves a little bit high, it seems like he's letting go of the ball kind of a little bit high on his release point. Okay. I'll pay attention to that. That one got in there for a strike. for a strike. Now he's starting to find the rhythm. Maybe he's smelling it. Left that one just a little bit high. Burgos at the plate. Had a base hit back in the fourth inning. Swung on and missed for a strike. He's got to throw it to first to get the out. Got him. Boy, what a friendly backstop, huh? No kidding. <laughs> There's that part of the control that we talked about. Got to make sure that you yeah. got to be real careful about that. Great job by Buford getting his foot down. Buford. foot. So now two outs here at top of the eighth. And if you're Southern, you just want to get something started. You need to. Gustavo, Nava Sanchez. That one in there for a strike. That has meat on it. 
This one back up the middle. Good job by Guichard and retires Southern University in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. Go to the bottom of the eighth. 7 3. join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. Dropping. Rapid rehydration initiated. Unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes. Rapid rehydration to get you back on your game. Gator Light. Now available in powder and Gator Light Zero Sugar. Chris Marcellus up to bat now for Grambling. Southern desperately needs to get Grambling down one, two, three. And come up in the top of the ninth and make something happen. They got to make hay. Yep. Go get our boy, Frank Hay. Yeah. <laughs> he made some hay today. Yeah. Swung on for a strike. Yeah, they got to they gotta get something happening here in the top of the ninth. Oh, yeah. Swung on and missed for strike two, or strike three, three rather. Marcellus is a relatively easy out if you just throw him straight. Well, yeah, and he struck out three times tonight. <laughs> yeah. He got the first out of the inning back in the sixth, second out of the inning back in the uh, third out of the inning back in the first. Okay. Now Terry Burrell the third. He got a single and scored a run back in the sixth inning. Struck out in the third. This one fouled off. Quickly, he's behind in the count. And if, if I feel bad for Harris. He didn't throw the ball that bad. No, he the, didn't. Just the misplayed ball in center field, the drop ball in right field. <laughs> and that's a that's out of play. And the ball at first base, that the, the <laughs> uh, that error just yeah just yeah. misplayed that ball. Yeah. Shot in the right field for a base hit. Good throw. Real good throw. Terry Burrell now on base for the second consecutive time after starting 0 for two. Back to the top, top of the order. Tiger Barong. Brasso really hasn't pitched that bad. No. They really haven't. It's just the mistakes got them into trouble. And the triple that he got hit in the sweet spot. Yep. Shot down the first baseline foul. Come 
Here's the pitch. Nice punt down the go. first baseline. Kids are so quick to want to pick up a ball when they can't get a, man, a person out. See, good, let it go. You can't make a play. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Our producer said, you deserve an assist on that one. <laughs> yeah. I was just about to say his coaching chops came right out, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I did when I coached. I didn't leave it to them. Figure out. Here's the throw. This one's going to go into center field. And then he misjudged that. E2. Fourth error of the ball game for Southern. Can't win making that many errors. And now Brass will start to throw it in the dirt a little bit. Well, they pitch differently you know, because they don't want the kid to hit the ball no more. Gets it on unassisted play. You see some them put it in play, they hit it at people, you know? Two outs now. Walker. He's a good hitter. Absolutely. He's a good, good hitter. Couple of singles and, and a triple, triple in this yeah. ball game. One thing you don't want here is for Walker to get a base hit. That will extend that lead past, as you say, the Grand Slam threshold. Yeah. Just missing for a ball. And you don't want to walk here either. <laughs> well, you might have an easier time with the guy on deck. Trevor Hatton, yeah. Yeah, it didn't walk her. He struck out twice, and he's got a, a okay. single. Yeah. Walker don't have too many holes. I've watched him. He's got the good swing, good play coverage. On base three times, three for four. It's a good work, good night of work. That's a strike. Well, after after you're ahead, he's ahead in the count three one, he, three on uh, three zero. Oh, he's not going to swing. Yeah. Inside of the plates for a strike. Now a full count. That's a ball. You know, if you're an umpire, you got to have some thick skin. Oh, very thick skin. <laughs> well, not here, them son of a buggers. <laughs> I call them son of a buggers. Well, you get called everything in the Bible and yeah. some stuff that ain't in the Bible. Oh, yeah. Well, Trevor Haddon up to bat. Runner goes second uncontested. Good job. Good job, eh? Oh, shot down the third base line foul. What you don't want if you are Brasso is Trevor Hatton to get on base because you got Keenan Matt coming up next. No, you got to get this hitter here. Yeah. Got two outs. Yeah. If Keelan Mack comes up, could have some real problems. That pitch missing for a ball. They don't have anybody in the bullpen, so it's all his baby. Yep. It's your baby, baby. Up high, ball three. Hey, 
Brasso behind, 3-1. Here's the pitch, swung on. Uh -oh. Trevor Haddon gets this one up. Got to make this catch routine. So no runs, one hit, one air, and one left. We now go to the top of the nine, three outs remaining. Southern's either got to tie it, go ahead, or the game is over. Back after this. Kyle Radcliffe on for the Southern Jaguars, the designated hitter. Ethan Bates on to pitch. And if you're Grambling, you got three outs to get to win. If you're Southern, you got three outs in order to try to <laughs> tie this game up. <laughs> Either way, it's going three. Three is a magic number. Yeah. Happens one hit at a time. And this one shot to the shortstop, Gishard. How many putouts has he had tonight? He's had enough. Quite a few. And he's one of their better players at second base. Absolutely. You know. I got to tell you, Coach Pierre has put together a pretty decent team. You know. Nice pick. Ball one. Nice Two outs nice left. Move. Well, if you're Southern, the good news is if you lose this game, you fight to play another day tomorrow. This shot in the center field. This one's going back, and it's going to be caught. On the hop was Terry Burrell, the third. And now down to the final out. Hunter Tab. So they play shooting the, lo the losers play the winner out of prayer view and so in this part of the bracket the loser of this game plays Bethune tomorrow at noon so in about 12 hours swung on and miss and we'll go over the entire bracket once the game is over with kind of let you know what's going on we'll have post game interview with Charles Bishop. 
Yeah, with Carl. We don't know with who. Okay, now we can talk. <laughs> Straight up in the air. Buford with the catch. And that's the ball game. The Grambling Tigers on to tomorrow's semifinal. Tigers are one win away from getting to the championship game. And so we'll go over the bracket here in just a second. Final score of this game, Grambling wins it, seven to three. And we'll go down to Charles Bishop here in just a second. Grambling Tigers trying to get back to the SWAC championship game. They're one win away from that. And before we go over the bracket, we'll get ready to go down to Charles Bishop. And I tell you what, Coach, outstanding ball game once again here by the Grambling Tigers. This one, not as much medicine needed as it was in <laughs> last night's game against Jackson State. Right. Well, it probably needed just as much with the errors that the, the people who were pulling for Southern and uh, with the miscues they had. Right, right. You know. Well, again, the final score, 7-3, Grambling wins it, and uh, Charles Bishop. We'll uh, be talking to the winning pitcher of this ball game, Connor Rudy. Charles, take it away. Yeah, down here with Connor Rudy, 94 pitches tonight and uh, 12 ground outs, man. What were you doing to keep the ball low? Um, man, just trying to get ahead early. Um, obviously, don't get a lot of strikeouts, so um, it, it, the defense makes my job a lot easier with the way they played. And uh, on top of that, the offense got runs early, and uh, that, that just makes a pitcher's life easier. Man, so I'm, so I'm very blessed to be playing with the people I am. Uh, your offense was able to give you uh, quite a few runs, uh, really help things out. Certainly, uh, they've been swinging it well all season, and uh, I'm just glad they could, they uh, carried it into the, the tournament. And um, now I hope they just keep it up. Sure thing. Go celebrate with your teammates. All right, thanks a lot, Charles. Twelve ground outs. That's, you know, defensively, when you're doing that, I mean, you got you got it going on. Well, you're going to win a bunch of games if you do that. Yep. And the defense played really good for them. Uh, they turned a couple of double plays, so, you know. Well, final score is 7-3. to three. Let's go over the bracket here quickly. First of all, 9 a.m. tomorrow, it will be Florida A&M taking on Prairie View A&M. That is a, an elimination game. The winner of that game will go on to face Alabama State tomorrow at 3 p.m. Then at the bottom part of that bracket, it'll be Southern University taking on Bethune-Cookman at 12 noon. The winner of that game will play against Grambling tomorrow night allegedly at 6 p.m. Allegedly. If Grambling or Alabama State win their games tomorrow afternoon or evening, they go to the championship game. If one of those teams would happen to lose, we'd go to a deciding game on Saturday. So a lot on the line coming up tomorrow for these teams that are remaining. Well, it's been a great broadcast. Charles Edmond will be bringing you the Florida A&M preview game early at 9 a.m. in the morning and then Bethune-Cookman and Southern at noon. For James Crenshaw, Charles Bishop, head coach, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you, Coach Cato. Once again, great insight. We'll see you tomorrow from Atlanta, Georgia. Final score once again, 7-3, Grambling over Southern. Have a good night, everybody.